Some companies have two different classes of common stock with completely different voting rights. So this is called a dual class structure or a dual capitalization. And here's how it works. So let's say we have a company with class A common shares and class B common shares. And the class A common shares get one vote per share. The class B shares are five votes per share. So let's say we have two different shareholders. Shareholder one has 100 shares of class A, so they're gonna get 100 votes. But shareholder two has 100 shares of class B, so they're gonna get 100 times five, they're gonna get 500 votes. Okay, so even though each shareholder has 100 votes, so we've got shareholder one has 100, shareholder two has 100, so each shareholder owns 50% of the total number of shares, but in terms of the total voting power, we see that 500 divided by 600, the, the shareholder owns 100 shares of Class B in this example. They would control 83.3% of the voting power, even though they only control 50% of the total number of shares. So basically, this gives disproportionate voting power to a certain group, which is usually like the company's founder or his family members and, and so forth. So you'd have like the founder. For example, the founder wants to do an IPO like the founder of a tech company, like like uh, Snapchat, for example, right? Snap. They want to do an IP. They did an IPO. They wanted to raise money. They raised money, but Evan Spiegel, uh, the founder, he did not want to give up control, right? So he wants to have a lot of control. So they create two classes of shares to make sure that that founder retains significant control over the company. Uh, basically by setting up these, these two different classes of stock. Another example is Facebook. So Facebook has... This is from, I, I pulled this from their 10K. So they've got two different classes. So we see here the dual class structure. And notice that with Facebook, you got the class B common stock, 10 votes per share. And then we've got class A, one vote per share. Who owns the class B? Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, right? So Mark Zuckerberg, he, he basically, this is how you can have Zuckerberg owning 27% of the total number of shares but having like 57% of the control of the voting power, okay? So it says that basically he controls the majority of the combined voting power. Okay? So he doesn't need that normally to control a company any more than 50% of the shares, right? If it's one vote per share, but if it's not one vote per share and we have this dual class structure, you don't need to have more than half the shares, okay? And so this, th wh why would anybody do this? You might, you see why the founder would want to do it, but why would somebody invest in a company like this? Well, it allows the founder, so in this case, Zuckerberg, can focus on the long-term building value for this company. Remember, when a company goes public, when they do their IPO, now there's going to be investors clamoring every single quarter they want to see, all right, I want to see earnings go up. I want to sales go up, see, see sales go up every single quarter. And you just focus on the short term. Sometimes people do things like management might do things that aren't in the best interest of the long term value or future of the firm, but they're just trying to meet their quarterly earnings target. So when we don't have this situation where uh, Facebook can be taken over or anything like that, because, you know, Zuckerberg has all the control. Zuckerberg could say, look, I'm just going to focus on building Facebook for the long term. I don't have to worry about meeting quarterly expectations to the same extent as I would if we didn't have this two class uh, of share uh, stock structure. The disadvantage is what if you don't what if you're an investor and you have the class A shares and you don't like the way Zuckerberg is running the firm? And you say, listen, I, I want to get this guy out of there and I just don't know how to do it. And so basically this is like a takeover defense mechanism. It's an anti-takeover provision when you set up this dual class structure. And it even says, Facebook comes out and says, look, this concentrated control uh, could prevent a merger or consolidation that our other stockholders support. So you could be owning stock in Facebook and say, oh, I would really love for this other company to take over Facebook or merge with Facebook. And Zuckerberg doesn't want that to happen. And even though a majority of the Facebook shareholders might want it to happen and say this is in our best interest, Zuckerberg, because he would have the control and he'd have the majority of the voting power, even though he doesn't have the majority of the shares, could block the deal.